Hey, welcome back to Paul's Outdoor Academy. I really appreciate you joining me for another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about lithium batteries as cranking batteries for boat motors. During my last fishing trip at Chickamauga, when it was time to leave for the day and I went to start the boat, I heard that click, click, click sound that you never want, whether it's a vehicle or a boat or tractor or anything else. And I knew that the battery in this boat was nearing the end of its life. And so I had jumper cables with me. So that was no issue. And that's probably a good tip to keep in mind is that it's nice to have a set of jumper cables even in your boat. I was able to use the trolling motor batteries to uh, jump off the regular battery. And so I made it back with no problem. I've started researching lithium batteries as cranking batteries online, and I'm surprised at some of the misinformation that I am seeing. But also, I wanted to share with you my research that I have done. I reached out directly to Mercury Marine, and I asked them questions about using lithium batteries as starting batteries for their engines. And the information that I got back from them kind of surprised me a little bit. It seemed to contradict what I read online from some people. Uh, I asked them if they would recommend specific batteries. I asked them if certain batteries are approved. I asked them some really specific questions and they provided some answers and I have those today with me and we're going to talk about those in this video and I'll share everything that I know. And this is current as of about uh, February 10th of 2024, so it's pretty recent information. I hope you'll enjoy this video, so stay with me. After the break, we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'll say is, when I got online and started researching this topic, I could not believe the amount of information that was available. Everyone has an opinion. Uh, there is some great information out there. There's some information that I think is misleading, etc., etc. And so the first thing that I did is I started to go out and just research what other people have to say about this topic. And I thought we would look at some of those. Now, this first topic is actually not about cranking batteries but it is about lithium batteries being used with trolling motors and I thought it would be interesting to look at this one. So it says, I was told yesterday that you can't use a lithium battery with a Minn Kota because the battery is too powerful for it and will blow the motor if running continuously, as in anchor lock or trolling. What's everyone's thoughts? Cheers. And so the first thing I did is I looked over to the left to see how people are responding and I saw smiling or actually laughing faces and thumbs up which kind of tells you how people are engaged. And the other thing that I noticed on the right side was that there are 51 comments. Now, I'm not gonna go into these comments and start looking at those. That's not what the rest of these messages are about. I will just say that out of 51 comments, there were a lot of disagreements and uh, some amusing comments from other people. Now, this next comment is about cranking batteries. And it's a question to start with. Thinking about moving to lithium? We would be happy to go over your setup and build a custom package for you as well as offer you discounted package pricing. Fell in the blank is the leader in lithium technology, first with the 16 volt lithium electronics battery. They offer the best warranty, 15 years total, 10 years non-prorated. They also have the only cranking lithium that meets or exceeds all Mercury's new specs to satisfy warranty, besides the Brunswick owned Relyon. Now, this is obviously a salesperson or a distributor of some kind who sells lithium batteries. And maybe at the time of them writing this comment, this was true. But I noticed they used the word only. Now, it may not be obvious, but this person is actually being passive aggressive. And I'm going to tell you why. Look at this last statement. They also have the only cranking lithium that meets or exceeds all Mercury's new specs to satisfy warranty besides the Brunswick owned rely on now the specific battery they're referring to is this one made by rely on and it's not just the brand it is the actual specific model the rb 100 hp which is a 12.8 volt and 100 amp hour battery and we'll talk about that more in just a minute but the main thing i wanted to mention here is that this brand of battery called rely on is owned by a parent company named brunswick and it just so happens that brunswick also owns Mercury Marine. So let's look at this next comment that says that if your engine is using a stator and not an alternator, then you can't use lithium as a cranking. I don't know why it just ends there, but it does. 
A stator doesn't have the high enough output to charge a lithium to full capacity and also could damage your engine. That's what I was told and after doing lots of research came to the same conclusion. Okay, so if you don't know what they're talking about when they say stator, they're talking about a stationary rotor or a stator for short. And another thing that you're probably more familiar with is an alternator. And if you're wondering why that's even important, larger boat motors tend to have alternators and smaller boat motors like mine, the 115 horsepower Pro XS, still have stationary rotors or rotors under the flywheel. Alternators have built-in voltage regulators and they produce DC current right out of the gate where stationary rotors produce AC current and that current has to be converted to DC voltage with something called a rectifier. And so this person's basically saying that if you have a stationary rotor on your boat motor, it doesn't produce enough electricity to charge a lithium battery and could be harmful to the motor. And I will talk more about that in a minute, but for now let's go on to the next couple of comments. So the comment on top says, based on my research, it's not recommended to use lithium batteries for cranking. And that is this person's opinion. Everyone's entitled to one, but I do notice that they are a top contributor, which means on whatever website I got that from, this person has a lot to say. Moving on to the one on the bottom, it says, personally, I would not use a lithium iron phosphate for cranking. Too much can go wrong, even with a battery specially intended for cranking. If the battery dies, and they do, you can only jump it with an identical battery or a lithium jump pack. Your alternator could possibly damage the battery. Two things come to mind. One is not all boat motors have an alternator. We've already talked about that, such as mine, which has a stator and a rectifier to convert the voltage. The second thing that comes to mind is that a lot of these lithium batteries have battery management systems built into the battery. In fact, they're wireless so that you can monitor them on your cell phone. And those battery management systems are built to protect that battery from being overcharged. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail and I'm definitely not going to read all these words, word for word, but I at least collected some information on four of the uh, bigger brands of batteries that are out for sale right now. All of these are cranking batteries and every one of them have a battery management system. And you can kind of pause the video there if you want to and read all about Relyon and Dakota, read about Monster, and then read about the Ionic brand. But the main thing that I wanted to point out, if you look at all these individually, minus the images of the battery, and just look at the specifications, you're going to see a lot of similar technology, such as preventing over-discharging, um, high voltage cutoff, short circuit protection, um, over voltage during charging, over current during discharge, etc. Okay, so now let's start looking at the main thing you probably came here for, and that is the most recent update available for Mercury regarding the use of lithium ion batteries as starting batteries. So let's start right off at the very top of the document, and you'll see that it says lithium ion use approval for outboards. Now I want to remind you that this comes in the form of a technical service bulletin. So when you see models affected, don't let that throw you because that's kind of confusing and makes it sound like something is wrong. <laughs> and that's not the case here. So the next thing that you may have noticed is that this says revised November of 2022. I don't want you to think that I have misled you or lied to you about this being current as of February. This is the response that I received back from Mercury when I asked them the question about lithium batteries. And there's a lot of good information here, even with this having not been updated since November of 2022. First off, the only reason that they updated this from the previous version, which was in September of 2022, was because they added the V10 Verado outboard models to the list of lithium ion use approved Mercury outboards. All right, so let's see what else we can get out of this document. The scope is worldwide. Okay, that's great. Uh, so let's move on to models affected because this is really important and where I think you'll get some really good information. First off, it actually lists the models that are covered. I don't know why that says models affected because I think that's a poor choice of wording. But again, this is based off the uh, look and feel of a service bulletin. I appreciate the fact that they're pointing out that all serial numbers are included because that makes this a lot easier. 
So we can focus on the specific models covered, and there's some really good information here that may not be obvious, but look at the size of the motors that are included in this. The 2.1 liter, 75 through 115 horsepower four-stroke, all the way up to the 500 and 600 horsepower C-Pro and Verado motors. There are a lot of different models in here, and you would have to be really careful to specifically look up uh, your boat motor to see if it's included in this list. So one thing that's really interesting here, and I'm not sure if you would pick up on this if I hadn't already talked to you a little bit about stators and alternators, is if you look at the size of motors here, you have both. You have motors with alternators and you have motors like mine, the 115 horsepower, that still has a stator. So I wouldn't worry about that as far as choosing whether or not to use a lithium battery based off the charging system you have on your motor. So looking down to the next section, this is where you're gonna get into the nitty gritty specifications that a battery has to meet in order to be permitted for use. I do think it's kind of funny they use the word situation, but again, technical service bulletin, keep that in mind. The situation for me was that I needed a new battery and I wanted to take advantage of lithium if that was an option. Okay, so once again, I'm not going to read this verbatim, and if you want to look at these specifics here, you can pause the video and take a look at all these. It's not a lot of specifications. If you go to websites and start looking at the specifications on batteries, some of them have 20, 30, 40 different items that describe the exact specifications of that battery, and they're only giving you a handful here. The trick to this is actually being able to take the information you see here and compare that to batteries online to see whether or not they meet those specifications. And it's because they use different terminology to describe some of these things. So right off the bat, the first thing it talks about is what is the chemistry or the format of the battery. And it specifically says lithium iron phosphate designed for marine cranking use. Now some of you may be saying, oh shucks, the battery I was looking at doesn't say that it's lithium iron phosphate. It says L-I-F-E-P-O-4, whatever that is. Well, that is the written out form of L-I-F-E-P-O-4. And you can kind of break that down by lithium and iron, and then phosphate is the PO4 part of that. But just so you know, lithium iron phosphate is the same thing as L-I-F-E-P-O-4. Okay, so moving on to the next section, there is a note that says use at temperatures below 32 degrees may require optional equipment such as a battery heater not supplied by mercury. Consult a battery manufacturer for assistance with cold weather use. Now you're probably wondering what in the world does cold weather have to do with lithium battery usage? And one way to understand that is to consider cold weather like a bully at the school who's failed two or three class levels and likes to pick on kids. And then consider the lithium battery and how it charges to be the little puny kid at school that everybody picks on. And it's my understanding that cold weather simply makes it harder to charge lithium batteries. For this reason, some of your bigger manufacturers like Ionic have both a non-heated and a heated version of their lithium iron phosphate cranking battery. And so the last part of this that I'll point out is the rely on battery that we talked about near the beginning of the video. And this is where Mercury specifically calls it out. And it does not say they recommend this battery. It simply says the battery has been evaluated and meets the requirements for lithium ion engine starting batteries. That is the reason why there are people that get confused about the rely on RB100 HP and they say this is the only one that they recommend. And what I appreciate about this brand of battery is they clearly say when you're looking at the specifications for the RB100 that it was the first battery that was evaluated and approved for use. It does not say on the Rely On website that they are the only battery that's approved for use. And then the last thing that I'll mention on this technical service bulletin about these batteries is that it says other lithium ion cranking batteries may be used if their battery ratings and data sheet meet these specifications, the seven specifications they listed above. And the last thing that I'll talk about is the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. And you will see that listed on these websites of these battery manufacturers. And they're basically saying that mercury 
couldn't tell you that your warranty is voided unless they could prove that the lithium battery is what damaged your mercury motor. And the last thing that I'll say is I recently released a YouTube short video that shows my boat and shows me opening up the battery storage compartment and you see all ionic batteries in there. Suffice to say, I upgraded to lithium for cranking and I chose the ionic brand. All right, and that's going to wrap up this video. I hope that you enjoyed the information that's been presented. Again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would ask you to please consider doing that. I'm going to try to be better about putting out regular videos, and it could be about anything, fishing, electronics, uh, outdoors, utility vehicles, all kinds of stuff. So thanks again for joining me. God bless. Take care.